Okay, so basically I added this 2x4 to pad out the wall because at the base, around the whole perimeter of my garage, we have kind of this uh, pressure treated banding. Um, I'm guessing the um, drywall doesn't extend all the way to the floor. And so that's what's used to cover up the gap and the gap probably provides access to cords and other things as well to wiring and stuff like that and then if you follow along if you can see the red line I laid out <clears throat> along the floor exactly where the new wall is going to lie and once I get down to this end here I have to pad this uh, this out as well with uh, you know some one by material I think so I'm gonna do that now okay next step is to pre-drill some holes um, so I can locate where I'm going to drop my Tapcon screws to secure the sill plate to the floor. Okay, now with the 2x4 in place, I'm going to use a, like a long nose pattern marker, reach down inside those holes that I drilled, and mark the locations where I need to drill out for my anchors. Okay, so I'm using a quarter inch masonry screws. I don't know if I can get that to focus or not. But there we go. So that requires the use of a 3 16 inch um, masonry bit that I'm going to use in my, my drill. And you have to make sure that your drill is set to hammer or you won't be able to drill through that concrete. You obviously want to make sure you get deep enough so you don't bottom out the screw in the hole or it'll break off. Now the temptation is to push down really hard, but you'll just end up bending it one way or the other and ruining your bit, so you don't want to do that. Just let the bit in the, in the hammer drill do the work. It may take a little bit longer than what you're used to going through wood, but you'll get there. Okay, once all the holes are drilled out, you should be able to just slide your, your bottom plate back into position, lining it up with that reference line that I drew earlier. <clears throat> I'll drop in my concrete anchors and hopefully everything will line up. Okay, now that I've got this one plate secured to the ground, <clears throat> I have to measure and cut for the next one. And then when I'm done securing that one to the ground, I'll be able to build my wall. So before I start building out this wall that I've started, I'm going to use some of this um, expansion joint foam. I'm going to apply it to this padding piece and then as I put the, the top plate on the wall I'm going to put it between the top plate and the ceiling and the idea behind this is to help isolate this wall from the rest of the house so any vibrations or frequencies that will be absorbed by the wall aren't transmitted to the house 
I know that it's probably futile. I'm not, I know I'm not going to get complete sound isolation, but it should help knock down a few decibels. And everyone counts when you are adjacent to a home uh, like this garage is. So there's the detail of my foam sandwich. So again, trying to isolate any vibrations from the new walls that I'm building. So now at the other end of this 12 foot um, board, the sill plate, I'm going to put, you know, uh, put another one and I'm going to run the top plate all the way down and make a real shoddy arrangement until I can get all of the other studs in the middle. But once I get the uh, two ends up and get that top plate on, everything else should pop right into place. Okay, so there's the inside corner with the foam between the ceiling and the top joist or the top plate. As you run down here, you see maybe maybe not that the gap gets bigger and bigger and down there it's about three and a half inches between the top of the top plate and the ceiling but this works out for me because I have no floor joists running directly above where my wall is and so it'll help I'll be able to build little nailers uh, that will go perpendicular to the wall in certain locations and so it'll let me attach the wall securely to the ceiling but it'll also help make up that gap um, that's in there so on the end here I'll probably make one with a uh, where are you at? with a two by four I think I said three and a half inches it's actually like two inches because that was before I put the top plate on so I'll put a two by four in there and then I'll put like a one by four up here halfway. And of course, isolating each one with the same foam that I use right here, this stuff. Man, this light must be really low in here because my poor camera's having a hard time focusing. See that, that or the cold weather, one or the other. I'm actually having a hard time finding the joists in the ceiling here, but I found one good one to nail to, so. I put up that block and then I shimmed it to the end of the wall here and then I nailed the wall to the block and so now this thing is firm, you know, pretty firm. I'm sure this is convincing you. <laughs> but yeah, I can shake it and it won't move so it's good enough for me. This this one I'm, I'm paying extra attention to this particular section of wall because this is the one that will contain the doorway and so that door will be opening and closing over and over and over again and I want to make sure it's a pretty solid wall
Okay, I've got one section of the wall up here. I'm not going to boil bore you with the details of all the other sections of the wall. So next time I see you, all the walls will be up. Okay, there's wall number one. Here's wall number two, all finished. So next step is the electrical. Here's a quick disclaimer. I am not a certified electrician. I don't know a heck of a lot about it. I just know enough to run what I need to run. I've got a really good friend who is a certified electrician. He coaches me along the way and he actually comes and helps out when needed. So I'm not going to film any of the actual installation of the electrical. Um, I think it would make the safety Nazis alarms go off um, at high volume and I really don't want to deal with that static right now and also I just want to get get it done but I will circle back once I'm done and show everybody how it was done before I cover everything with drywall.